Upgrading the heat bed MOSFET on your Wanhal duplicator or monoprice maker might seem a bit intimidating, but it's actually very easy. First, you want to power off the printer and remove any USB or SD card and remove the power cable. Flip over the control unit and remove the back and bottom panel. I find taking the back panel off first is the easiest way. Next, remove the seven screws around the bottom perimeter of the case. The four screws in the middle are only there to hold the power supply in place. You can remove those now or later, it's your choice. Next, slide the bottom of the case backwards until the power supply clears the case. If you remove the power supply screws, you can simply lift the cover off. Locate and carefully unplug the LCD cable from the LCD. Some printers may have this cable hot glued in place, so you'll have to pick that off first. Next, unscrew the four screws holding the controller board into the case. Note that these screws have spacers, so you want to be sure not to lose them when you remove the screw. Lift the control board out of the case and set the case aside for the time being. The connector that we're going to focus on is the one marked hotbed. Simply use a flathead screwdriver to loosen the screws and the wires should slide right out of the connector. Next, find the white and blue wire that came with your MOSFET upgrade kit. Now positive is identified by the square blue markings and the negative wire is the rectangular markings. This wire will go between the MOSFET board and the terminal on the control board uh, that you just removed the wires from. So you want to strip the wires if you need to and place them into the connector. Screw down each terminal until the wires are snug and not able to be easily removed. Next, find the connectors that were shipped with the kit and crimp them onto the wires coming from the hotbed. These again are the wires that you originally removed from the control board. The MOSFET board has four terminals. Two are marked DC in and two are for the hotbed. The hotbed polarity isn't marked, however the polarity is the same order as the DC side. Connect the wires that you just crimped from the hotbed to the terminals marked hotbed and tighten the screws to hold them in place. Next, find the two pre-crimped pieces of wire that shipped with your kit. Connect one end of the red wire to the DC in positive and the black wire to the DC in negative.
So I've already printed a bracket from Thingiverse to hold the MOSFET board in place. It looks like my bed wasn't level or something and part of the printout was messed up. However, it really shouldn't matter too much as it's still pretty strong and it fits. I'll include a link below to where this bracket can be found. Now get your case back and mount the control boarding MOSFET board back into that case. Make sure that you plug the LCD screen back in as well. The screws to mount the MOSFET board aren't included usually, however, you can pick them up at your local hardware store. They're just simple M3 hex screws. Once both boards have been mounted, plug in the blue and white wire to the MOSFET board connector. Now the final wiring step is to simply connect the remaining two leads to the power supply. Now because I didn't do it earlier, I'm going to separate the power supply from the bottom panel now. On the power supply, flip up this orange protective piece. Now depending on your printer, there should be an open COM and an open plus V terminal. The black wire goes to COM and the red goes to plus V. Now while you're in here, it's also a good idea to go through and make sure all your other terminals are screwed down tight. We're moving the power supply back and forth a lot and uh, it could work some of those loose. Now here's where I ran into a problem. The leads for the MOSFET board were too short. The bracket that I used placed the MOSFET board by the vents towards the front of the case, and that's away from all the rest of the wires, and I did that to make, it, make sure it got good cooling. Now to connect these leads, I had to disconnect them from the power supply and then connect the leads while the power supply was actually in the case. An easier way would just be to purchase or make longer leads. Now if you do use your own, just be sure that you use the same gauge or thicker gauge wire. You'll also notice the green fan shroud. I took this opportunity to replace the back panel with its 40 millimeter fan to a larger 120 millimeter fan. This 120 millimeter fan running at half speed will still pull more air through the case than the 40 millimeter fan and it'll be a lot quieter. At this point, simply assemble everything and test your printer. And as always, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. Give the video a like if this was helpful, and uh, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.